Hello children, how are you? Today we are here to discuss about circulation in various organisms. See, I told you that circulation is a very important mechanism that occurs, process that occurs in the organisms. Uh, it helps in circulating the nutrients from digestive system to various parts of the body and excretory material from blood to the excretory organs. It also helps in transport of hormones, antibodies, various things like that. So, in various organisms, these nutrients, even gases need to be exchanged. They should be uh, circulated inside the body. For that circulation, they need some mechanism in their body. So, from unicellular organisms to higher organisms like us, every organism needs circulation in their body. And But the method or mechanism adapted by each organism is different from other. So, first we will start from unicellular organisms, then we will discuss about invertebrates. Circulation in protozoan is very simple. The movement of the cytoplasm brings about the movement of nutrition in its body and even it helps in excretion. Just like the movement of uh, currents in the ocean, the movement of ocean currents is similar to the motion, uh, motion of cytoplasm and this movement is called as Brownian movement. The continuous zigzag motion of the particles suspended in a gas or a liquid is called as Brownian movement. It was discovered in the year 1827 by the botanist Robert Brown and is named after him. For example, let us observe a beam of sunlight entering a dark room. You will find that the dust particles are con constantly moving in a haphazard manner. What makes the dust particles move continuously in the air? You already know that air is a mixture of gases and gas molecules are always in state of random movement. The same is the case of uh, molecules of cytoplasm also. These molecules hit the dust particles from all around and make them move in an irregular manner. Similarly, if you put some pollen grains in water, they do not remain rest but they move about continuously and randomly. The similar is the movement in cytoplasm of uh, protozoans also and this is an example for brown. Okay, now we will start about invertebrates children but before starting about uh, invertebrate circulatory system, I would like to say you one thing. Whenever we study the organ systems of invertebrates, we go in a sequence of their phylum. How we have studied in our classification when we studied in ninth class classification of invertebrates, how was it? It was like this. First we studied about porifera. In Porifera, we studied about sponges. Second phylum is Nidaria. In Nidaria, we study the organ systems of Hydra. And next goes Platyhelminthus. In Platyhelminthus, we study about tapeworm or planaria. Next after platyhelminthus we study nematihelminthus. In nematihelminthus we study roundworm. After this we study annelida. In annelida we study earthworm. And then we study Arthropoda. In Arthropoda, we study the insects. Most probably cockroach is studied. Okay, so these will study. These will uh, discuss in today's uh, video. So let's go ahead children. Thank you. 
circulation in porifera taking the example of sponges sponges have pores all over the body so water from outside that is it is a marine organism so marine water from around its body enters into its body and this water reach and reaches each and every cell of the body so it becomes easy for the sponges to circulate nutrients through this water that is mediated inside its body the water is passing through the sponge seal which is actually the cavity of the body that is present inside the sponge this uh, sponge seal which is present in the sponge sponges helps in not only circulation of nutrients it also helps in circulation of gases exchange of gases and even it helps in excretion of waste material from each and every cell of the body water enters the body of sponges through the pores that are present in on the body of the sponges and they enter this sponge seal and through this sponge seal the water that is present inside the sponge body it helps in circulation of nutrients in the entire body of sponges and it also uh, circulates the carbon dioxide that is present in the cells to the external environment through the same pores when the water leaves the sponge seal and the uh, water that enters the sponge seal also carries the oxygen into its body so this pores uh, form a continuous water canal system with this sponge seal that helps in transport of oxygen into the body of the organism and once the body uh, once the water enters into the sponge seal it acts as a medium for uh, transport inside the body and it also helps in elimination of excretory material so the sponge seal is in contact with every cell of the sponge so whatever excretory material is produced inside the body of sponge it enters into the body of a, uh, in, it enters into the sponge seal from each and every cell and from there it enters out to outer environment it is eliminated to the outer environment through the same pores so whatever excretory material are to be eliminated outside like carbon dioxide excretory material entering to sponge seal from each and every seal each and every cell and from there it is entering to the outer environment it is excreted through the pores that are present inside the body so this water uh system helps in transport inside the body and also elimination of substances to the external environment in the sponge and coming to the excretory uh, circulatory system of hydra hydra is a nidarian and it has a cavity in the center that cavity is called as gastrovascular cavity this gastrovascular cavity uh, helps uh, in circulation of nutrients inside the body this cavity supplies the nutrients all over the body to the cells that are lining the cavity it provides oxygen from water into the cavity it uh, it helps in uh, it uh, takes the carbon dioxide and other waste into it so this is a simple movement that takes place inside the body of hydra it has a mouth just above this gastrovascular cavity it does not have any anus or other opening only single opening is present so water it is also a marine organism so water enters into the gastrovascular cavity through this mouth and once the um, water enters into the gastrovascular cavity it acts as a uh, medium of circulation of nutrients in the body of uh, hydra it also helps in collecting all the waste material from each and every cell 
excretory material from each and every cell. In a, it also carries the carbon dioxide from each and every cell and helps in elimination of this uh, excretory material as well as carbon dioxide to the outer out environment. The water enters into the body through mouth and also leaves the body through mouth only. So there is signal opening for this gastrovascular cavity which helps in entry of oxygen, useful substances like food into the body and also it helps in elimination of waste material like carbon dioxide and other waste material out of the body of hydra. This is the mechanism of circulation that takes place inside the hydra. Water enters from external environment into the body of hydra and uh, it circulates the uh, substances inside the body. It carries oxygen inside and waste material are collected into this water. Carbon dioxide is collected into this water from each and every cell that is in contact with this gastrovascular cavity or element eliminatory substances as well as carbon dioxide enters into gastrovascular cavity and gas the liquid uh, marine water that is present inside this uh, gastrovascular cavity exits the organism through same mouth and carries the waste material out of the body of hydra so in this way circulation occurs in the body of this organism So here one thing to be noted is uh, exchange of gases also is taking place through this gastrovascular cavity and mouth only and elimination of waste material is also taking place through the same organs and circulation of uh, nutrients in the body are also taking place through this. So it does not require a separate respiratory system, a separate excretory system separate circulatory system. The same mouth and gastrovascular cavity are playing the role of circulatory system, respiratory system and also excretory system. So when we study about excretory system again we study the same thing. Next I will discuss about the circulation in uh, platyhelminthes, mintas taking the example of Planaria digestia. This uh, Planaria digestia is also having a gastrovascular cavity, but here the gastrovascular cavity is slightly di different from that of uh, hydra. So it is a little bit complex compared to that of uh, gastrovascular cavity hydra. So you can see in the figure that it is highly branched. It is the uh, uh, light thin color portion of this uh, figure is the tissue, while the darker skin colored one is the thin batch. Uh, it is the gastrovascular cavity. You can see the endings of this gastrovascular cavity on either side, both left and right side. It is penetrating into the tissues and this part which is penetrating into the tissues is having branch like structures so that it can reach each and every cell. That means gastrovascular cavity of this uh, flat worm is highly branched and it is reaching each and every cell, body cell. This branch uh, gastrovascular cavity runs close to all the body cells and this helps in diffusion of uh, nutrients, gases and waste. Because uh, this gastrovascular cavity is in contact with each and every cell of the body. This gastrovascular cavity is helpful in diffusion of sub, sub, different substances to a shorter distance only. A very large organism like human being, if it is having gastrovascular cavity, diffusion of substance to each and every cell is not possible. 
because it takes time diffusion is a time taking process it is possible only in these lower organisms because these lower organisms are structurally very small since they are structurally very small they can the gastrovascular cavity is in contact with each and every cell of the body and if this type of diffusion is to take in higher organism it will take many many months for in a single substance to transport over the entire body since these are very small organisms uh, uh, small small areas to be covered that's why diffusion occurs very fast so that suits the uh, body size of this organism also so uh in planaria only mouth is the organ that is present uh, the similar to that of hydra these organisms do not have any second opening like anus for the elimination of waste material so entry of the water into the body entry of the uh, substances into the body of these organisms occurs by this mouth only and one thing about this Mm, planarians, not only planarians, most of the flatworms, platyhelminthes organisms, are all parasites. Parasites means they live in the body of other organisms, whether it is a animal or human being. Since it is a parasitic organism, these organisms live in the body of other organisms, and they absorb the nutrients directly from each and every. uh from for each and every cell that is required for this organism so it there is no process like taking the food inside digesting inside the body so there is produced inside the body are very less since uh and waste material are very less that is also eliminated out of the body through the same mouth into the body of the organism in which it is living so that is the mechanism that operates in planaria the food enters into the nutrients enter into the body of this planaria through this and once the uh, uh, nutrients enter into the body of this organism it is distributed into the entire body through this branched gastrovascular cavity the main disadvantage of this system is that only the small organisms can uh, take uh, can perform this circulation and it cannot be seen in higher organisms since the main phenomena is diffusion and diffusion over long distance it is not possible and diffusion occurs in at shorter distances in the smaller organism so that is suitable for only smaller organisms it is not suitable for higher organisms so after platyhelminthes the next organism that comes the next phylum to be discussed is uh, nematyhelminthes and uh, there is this organism which are examples for uh, nematyhel means is a round worm pin worm uh, filarial worm etc these organisms do not have any gastrovascular cavity the gastrovascular cavity when you saw the gastrovascular cavity it started with mouth so in these organisms gastrovascular cavity is modified to form the digestive system with a mouth and anus So in these organisms for the circulation there is an another cavity which is called as pseudocoelom that is on either side of the digestive system this is a cavity it is called as false body cavity and when we studied about the phylum in our ninth class we discussed that pseudocoelom is a body cavity which is not lined by epithelial cells because of lack of epithelial cells on the lining of this coelomic cavity this is called as a false coelom or pseudocoelom 
So uh, this pseudocoelom, which is on either side of the digestive tract, help in transport of substances inside the body. Since digestive system is present, the uh, digestion process is taken by digestive system. After that, the digested nutrients need to be uh, and they need to circulate inside the body. That is done by the uh, coelomic fluid that is present inside this coelomic cavity. So, most of these uh, small organisms which uh, in these organisms, movement occurs in the body through this uh, coelomic fluid only. Movement of substances like nutrients, uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide, these substances are transported through this uh, coelomic fluid only, which is directly in contact with the internal tissues and organs. It acts as a medium of transport. This uh, uh, what is it? This is not only present in nematihelminthes. Uh, this type of uh, pseudocoelom is also seen in other organisms like uh, ectoprocts, uh, sepunculans, echinoderms, which we will be discussing in the higher classes children. Just uh, understand that this is not limited to nematihelminthes. This is present in other invertebrates. Uh, of other phylum also which, which we will be discussing in higher classes only point to remember it is present in other individuals also not exclusively only in nematihelminthes so in these organisms especially nematihelminthes the circulation is done by pseudocoelom uh, which acts which is filled with coelomic fluid and acts as a medium of transport for nutrients also excretory waste also and it helps in exchange of gases in these organs. Coming to the next organism that is earthworm. Earthworm is having a uh, well organized circulatory system with a blood, with two uh, blood vessels. One which runs on the upper side of the body and second that then runs on the lower side of the body. The upper blood vessel is called as dorsal blood vessel. You can see it is running in this way on the upper portion. The structure that is present below this blood vessel, you can see there is some opening and all. This is the um, this uh, central structure is nothing but the digestive tract of uh, earthworm, which is in the center. And on either side of this digestive tract or elementary canal. You can see that there are blood vessels. The upper blood vessel is called as dorsal blood vessel. This dorsal blood vessel collects the blood which is deoxygenated from all the parts of the body. From all the parts of the body, even from the sinuses, that is body spaces, blood enters into this dorsal blood vessel. After the blood enters into the dorsal blood vessel, we can see that there are here there are the structures um, which are small tube-like structures that is connecting the dorsal blood vessel and the lower blood vessel, which is called as ventral blood vessels. These structures are called as hearts, pulsating hearts. First time the pulsating hearts are present in earthworm. What do you mean by pulsating heart? They, they are made up of muscles and they can contract and relax. Till now there is no structure in any organism which can contract and relax. In this earthworm it is the first structure which is made up of muscle and it helps in contracting and relaxing because it is made up of muscle. Now that's why they are called as heart. Sometimes it is just uh, uh, referred to as pulsating tubes. Sometimes it is referred to as heart. This heart is not an organized structure as in higher organism, but it helps in pumping the blood from dorsal blood vessel to the ventral blood vessel. You can see the ventral blood vessel is the blood vessel that is running below the digestive tract. And this blood, ventral blood vessel helps in distribution of blood. It is having minute branches. These minute branches that arise from this ventral blood vessel help in distribution of uh, uh, blood from this uh, ventral blood vessel from heart to ventral blood vessel from ventral blood vessel to 
different parts of the earthworm. This is the circulation of earthworm. Coming to the next organism, it is the circulation in cockroach. In cockroach, uh, we can see that blood flows into the sinuses. There are no particular blood vessels that distribute the blood into body cavities. This type of circulation is called as open type circulation. In this type of circulation, you can see uh, heart is present, blood is present, sinuses are present, and Elevary muscles are present. This type of circulation helps in distribution of nutrients to the all parts of the body and helps in elimination of excretory material to the uh, excretory organs of the body. See, so this organism uh, does not have blood vessels in its body. That is why this type of circulation is called as open type of circulation. Coming to the sinuses of this organism, we can see that there are three different body cavities of sinuses. First one is pericardial sinus, which is present around the heart, around the circulatory system. Perivisceral sinus is present around the digestive system, and perineural sinus is present around the nerve cord that is present in this organism. So, in this organism, this the heart is present in the pericardial sinuses. It is a 13 chambered heart. The small small structures are uh, chambers and blood flows from 13th chamber to 1st chamber. In reverse direction, after the 1st chamber, it enters into head. We can see that there are small small openings in these chambers of heart which are called as ostia through which blood enters from sinuses into this heart. At the end of at before the first chamber, there is a blood vessel called iota which carries the blood into head region. See, it's the next structures of uh, circulatory system of uh, cockroach are alary muscles which help in contract contraction and relaxation of heart chambers. We can see that when the contraction of this Salary muscle takes place, blood moves from perineural sinus and perivisceral sinus into the heart through the ostia and when the relaxation of salary muscle takes place, uh, sorry, alary muscle takes place, blood moves uh, from pericardial sinus into the heart. So after the blood enters into heart, it moves from 13th chamber gradually to the 1st chamber and it enters into the head region through iota. Once it enters head region, the blood is passed to perivisceral sinus and perineural sinus and the cycle repeats again. This is the circulation of cockroach. Next, coming to the next organ that is a mollusca, we can take the example of a snail, uh, oysters, squids in these uh, molluscans. In these molluscans, uh, there is a uh, well organized circulatory system which is also called as cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular system because it has heart, it has blood vessels. This type of circulatory system is called as closed type of circulatory system. In this closed type of circulatory system, there are blood vessels, heart, uh, and we can see that in mollusca, they, the respiratory organs are gills. Since, uh, since the um, blood is oxygenated at this gill, we can see that uh, these are having bronchial hearts also. This bronchial hearts are nothing but the pumping organs. They do not have any role in uh, circulation. They are just helpful in sending the blood to gills. They pump. When they contract, blood is pumped to gills so that there it is oxygenated. The circulation in mollusca starts like this. The deoxygenated blood that is present in body tissues enters into the bronchial heart. When the bronchial heart contracts, the blood that is present in these blood vessels is pumped into pumped to gills. Once the uh, what is the blood enters into the gills, there it is getting oxygenated. Carbon dioxide leaves the blood and oxygen enters into the blood. And after that, this oxygenated blood enters into a heart 
Uh, this is a muscular organ. It helps in con it is contracting and relaxing, so it helps in pumping the blood to all parts of the body. So now the oxygenated blood is pumped to all parts of the body. This type of uh, organized heart, which is having mechanism for oxygenation of blood, also it is having blood vessels also, which is having muscular structure also. So it is a heart which is uh, well advanced compared to other invertebrates with a pumping organ with uh, uh, purification of uh, blood that is oxygenation of uh, blood in separate gills so it is forming a complete circuit we can see that is about the circulatory system of mollusca and by observing all these circulatory systems we understand a basic concept that the animal kingdom has two types of circulatory system. One is open type circulatory system, second one is closed type circulatory system. The open type circulatory system is a type of circulatory system in which the heart pumps blood into um, the open cavities. There is no uh, uh, restricted flow in the blood vessels itself. This type of uh, circulatory system in which the blood is pumped into the open cavities is called as open type of circulatory system. From all the uh, tissues, blood is received by heart and from heart again blood is pumped back into body cavities. This blood reaches each and every cell, each and every tissue, each and every organ. In, in closed circulatory system, the blood flows only in the blood vessels whether it is pumped from the heart or when it is received to the heart only the blood flow is restricted to the blood vessels only and the coelomic fluid of some invertebrates also has circulatory role either in concerned with or instead of the hemolymph cell i hope you understood today's topic very well children you can revise it if you did not uh, memorize these things. You can revise it as many times as you want. But you need to remember these points, children. Study well, stay safe. Okay, children, bye.